Hey guys, this is going to be a super long video, so grab yourself a cup of coffee, put it on double speed, settle down because it's going to be a long one. Um, hope you enjoy. Party starting! <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I did this look here using the Too Faced Original Chocolate Bar Palette. Um, it was kind of a bit of a dramatic tutorial um, because lots of things went wrong, but I got there in the end. This is what the eyeshadow came out looking like. I used um, more of the um, cherry shade and the um, amaretto shade, so it's more of a burgundy kind of shimmery eye, um, and it's a little bit different to what I usually go for. So yeah, I'm really happy that it turned out so nice. I feel like the nose contour is really cute, and I'm back into nose contour. So yeah, if you if you'd like to see how I did this look here then please keep on watching. So of course I'm going to be starting off with primer. This is the NARS um, Oil Free Pro Prime Pore Refining Primer and I'm going to be applying that to my face using um, a flat brush that I can't find right now. Oh here it is. This is called the Tapered Foundation Brush from Real Techniques. I know it's also good to use like fingers to um, like kind of melt the primer into the skin better um, but I don't always feel like touching my face with my fingers. I don't know. I, I do like melting things into the face of fingers, but sometimes I just don't feel like, I don't know, getting primer all over my hands and getting my hands dirty with primer and stuff. So um, today I'm going to avoid getting my fingers greasy and stuff with primer and just use this brush instead. Um, I'm just going to be using the palette's mirror today because it's here. Sometimes I look into the viewfinder of um, my phone to like, see what I'm doing and I feel like I do an okay job but then when I look at my makeup in real life it's actually really unblended and stuff because obviously this isn't as clear as like an actual mirror so I'm just looking at the actual mirror so that I can get a better view of what I'm doing. I try and keep the primer in like the center of my face and then work it outwards from there so I like focus it on my like nose, around my nose area, on my cheeks here where there can be more pores um, and also on my chin where it's like Typically a more textured area around my mouth, that kind of area. The edges of my face are a little bit more like smooth and I feel like I don't really have an issue with the um, makeup gripping in general but if they would um, come off, it would come off more in the center of my face. So I try and focus the primer in the middle a bit more. Um, the foundation I'm going to be using again is the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth Foundation and I wear the shade um, 120 Classic Ivory. I'm just going to go in with this same brush um, and now use it for foundation. I don't like how this foundation has no pump because it means that I'm like here waiting for it to drip out for ages and nothing comes out of the bottle for a while. I'm almost used this foundation up. I'm probably going to have to start sticking in another brush like into the bottle soon to get the foundation out which I just don't find convenient. It's just messy. I wish this had a pump. I've seen recently they've come out with this foundation in a sachet form which is like really smart in my opinion. Um, it like, comes in a little plastic packet but then I also wonder like how recyclable is that little black like, plastic packet because like what can you do with that little plastic sachet afterwards whereas this is glass I feel like glass you can recycle a bit. I don't know I just don't feel like this is a very practical foundation packaging. Um, I really like um, the bourgeois foundation packaging that um, kind of has like that vacuum thing where it goes and it goes up as you use it up like the um, foundation goes up the tube as you use it um but um yeah I wish every foundation would do that um what are your favorite foundation packagings I'm interested to know oh I find a dropper quite practical as well like um kind of similar to like the um auric dropper from um Samantha's new range I feel like that's um a pretty practical practical packaging design um, I'm just gonna be smoothing that all over my face and uh, this is a pretty good foundation shade for me at the moment. It's a little bit um, lighter than my actual body but I'll warm it up with bronzer in a bit. Um, so how I apply foundation with this brush is I just kind of smooth out everywhere and then if I have any lines I just can pat with this brush so that I can like smooth out any um, streaks that I'm creating with the brush as I'm like kind of wiping it over my face. This foundation is quite nice and I do agree with the claims on the bottle that it's smooth. It does look very smooth on the skin. Keeping in mind though I don't have like hugely textured skin at the moment. My skin's being pretty behaved at the moment so I don't really have like textured skin um, but I do think it has quite a smooth um, dewy finish without being overly dewy. I don't feel like it looks like cakey or thick on the face. It does look like very thin layer um, and it just goes on pretty evenly. I don't feel like it's a patchy foundation. It doesn't grab strangely in any areas. It is just a good foundation. Um, I don't love the scent but it's not awful. 
I probably won't repurchase it though just because there are other foundations I would like to try and I've repurchased this a couple of times so I don't feel like I need to go for it again. I'm looking for my concealer if you're wondering. Um, the concealer I'll be using is the Rimmel Lasting Matte Concealer and I wear the shade um, 10 Fair Ivory which is actually it's kind of a light concealer. It was lighter than I expected it to be but it's fine. It smells a little bit like sunscreen to me though so I probably won't repurchase it. It's not the worst concealer actually. I like it more than I thought I was going to. Like when I first purchased it, I was a bit hesitant of it, like first impressions. Um, but as I've started to use it, it's actually not a bad concealer at all. I'm just using the same brush for um, the concealer as well. I'm just going in with everything on this brush. I'm going to take it down my nose a little bit just to lighten up my um, the center of my nose, like on the bridge there, because the foundation, I didn't put enough foundation on my nose. Um, I'm just patting it over this area so that it's not too streaky. Just kind of dabbing in. It's quite a nice bright coverage um, concealer. It has more coverage than um, some of my other Rimmel concealers, which is nice. It um, does give it a little bit more brightness than those ones do, um, and it conceals a little bit more. I feel like some of my other Rimmel concealers, I really like them because they give like a lighter coverage. They just kind of brighten and don't um, feel thick on the skin. This one doesn't feel thick. It just has like a bit higher of a coverage, if that makes sense. Um, I'm just applying it under my eyes, and then I kind of take it down around my nose in this area, just so that um, this area where I get a fair bit of redness on the front of my cheeks here is concealed nicely as well. I feel like that looks pretty good for me. I'll just take a little bit on my forehead in case I get red there. It's a beautiful sunny day today, so you can probably hear birds chirping outside. It's nice. I like the birds. Um, I'm going to be using this multi multitasking brush from Real Techniques and this um, Rimmel Clear Complexion Powder. Mine has broken, but I only have a little bit left, so I'm not sad about it. I just kind of open it like this and use that as a loose powder. Um, it's not as practical as it would be if it was a pressed powder, but I'm going to make do. I'm just going to work this like powder under my eyes like this and then use the rest of the product from the brush and just smooth that over the rest of my face. Um, I do powder a lot of my face just so that the um, face products that I put on top of this after um, are more likely to like um, not be patchy because I really don't like when my um, like blush skips or like when my bronzer feels patchy or something so I'm just going to powder everywhere so that everything has an opportunity to go on smoothly and my base is set nicely. I have got cheer tonight so um, I'll probably wear this face to cheer as well and I want to be like set at cheer. You don't have to wear makeup to cheer practice, I'm just a cakey kind of person. Um, so yeah, that's all the powder I'm going to do. Um, I kind of like some areas I like kind of pack it on more and then I like kind of dust it off afterwards so it's not like not too intense um, and I make sure to focus it around like the center of my face that t-zone kind of area um, so that that doesn't move too much and underneath my eyes because um, I'm setting my concealer okay so if my base looks a little different I was really unhappy with um, how my bronzer turned out so I took off my makeup and started again I did the exact same base products as you just saw but now I'm gonna go in and bronze for the second time. This is the Milani um, Silky Matte Bronzer and this was actually something that I didn't expect to like as much as I did. I'm using the same brush as I set my face with um, but this is a really nice scented bronzer. It smells like they call it a tropical coconut scent on the back and I totally agree. I feel like this bronzer is very smooth on the skin so I'm just going to be applying this um, under the jaw along the neck. Obviously take your makeup down your neck otherwise you look like you're wearing a weird mask and it doesn't look that good. Um, but yeah, I like this bronzer more than I thought I would. I just think it is a very smooth bronzer. It is silky, it is matte. Um, it's a little bit on the cooler side, like it's not a warm toned bronzer, so I'll probably go in with a um, warmer bronzer after this just to bring more like warmth back to the face, but this does bring some nice dimension um, without being like um, too, too cool toned for me. It is a very nice bronzer and I really like the way it looks on the skin. Um, it's a really natural kind of shadowy kind of shade. I haven't actually been reaching for... for reaching for contours a lot recently um, just because I've been really into just like contouring a little bit with my bronzer and leaving it like that but um, this is kind of getting me back into the mood to use like a cooler tone and a warmer tone on my face. Um, the warmer tone bronzer I'm going to be using today is the MAC um, Gimme Sun. It's a mineralized skin finish um, natural and I really really like this. Oh I can't open it. It looks like this. It's got like a magnetized closure. I just couldn't get it for some reason. And I like that there's a mirror inside as well. And this product used to be a huge dome, but I've used this so much that it's kind of like not a huge dome anymore. It's kind of like getting kind of flat, but I really like this product. It's very warm tone, so it brings like sun-kissed color back to the face and it's just a really gorgeous product. I really like the mineralized skin finish formula from MAC. I just think it's very um, natural and it's kind of like, um, I don't know if it's a baked product, but it gives me baked product vibes. Like it's just like 
a good product to use. Okay, I'm a lot happier with how this bronze turn out than the last time I did bronzer. I don't know. When I did it the first time, it came out really wacky looking. Um, but this time I feel like I match my body better and it's brought warmth to my face and I feel like I look normal. This is the next thing I'll be using. This is the MAC Desert Rose Blush. It's a powder blush from their, you know, matte formula. Just looks like this. It's kind of like a mauve um, mauve rosy kind of colour. I'm going to be using another, um, one of these brushes. They're just like multitasking brush brushes. I feel like these two are slightly different though. This is just another one from Real Techniques. All my brushes are pretty much, I think they all are Real Techniques today. Um, and I'm just going to be applying this with this big fluffy brush onto the cheeks. You might have seen a lot of times that I go in with like a smaller, more precise, like detailer kind of brush for blush, but I like using a bigger, fluffier brush for MAC blushes just because they are so pigmented. I kind of feel like I can um, get a more dispersed look by using um, a bigger brush like this um, and I can always build it up because obviously I like a really like blushed intense blush kind of look recently so I still feel like I can build up and get like a really blushed look without getting um, as precise and detailed of a blush because if I use like a smaller brush I feel like I'm drawing lines and then trying to blend them out whereas if I go for a larger brush I feel like I'm just like puffing it onto my face if that makes sense but yeah really like this blush it's very pigmented easy to use it's very pigmented though so I don't want to go in with like I'd like smaller brush or something. I feel like I'm putting too much on there. Um, where is my highlighter brush? I swear I left one in here for me to use. Um, the highlighter I'm going to be using is the MAC Whisper of Guilt. It's an extra dimension skin finish. Um, and I've hit pan because, as you've seen, me probably use this all the time. I use this all the time. And I'm just going to be applying it with this angled um, setting brush from Real Techniques. Um, I really like these little angled brushes. A lot of the time if the blush is less pigmented, I'll use one of these to apply my blush with, but I'm just going to be doing my highlighter with this today because um, I feel like I can get into smaller areas with this as well as like buff it out across my whole cheek because this is such a blendable um, highlight. I also go in with like a lot of blush because I feel like when I put on highlight afterwards, it takes down the look of the blush. Like my blush doesn't look as intense once I go ham over the top with highlight and I always go ham with highlight. So, um, you know, whatever. Oh, wait. That scratching noise is my dog. She wants to come in, so I'm going to let her in the house. My next question for you guys is, do you know of any scented highlighters? I'm really into, like, products that are scented nicely, like, not plasticky kind of scents, more, like, um, coconut, tropical, or, like, peachy, fruity scents, but not too fruity. I'm not into, like, I don't know, if it's, like, too fruity, I don't like it as much. I like more, like, vanilla-y, coconut -y kind of scents rather than, like, like, strawberry. I don't really like berry scents. I like, like, peachy scents, but not too peachy. Um, if you know of any highlights that are, like, that kind of scent, please let me know because I feel like a lot of highlights are, like, not scented, whereas a lot of bronzes are, like, coconut or, like, tropical kind of scents. Um, some blushes are, but it's, like, not as common. But I'd really love to know what highlights, um, have nice scents because I don't really have any highlights in my collection that have a crazy scent. Actually, my Colourpop ones do have a bit of, like, a scent. It's, like, a fresh scent, the ones that I have from Soul Body. Um, I'm just checking that my highlight's, like, pretty even. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a nose contour with this random um, little angled eyeshadow brush from Real Techniques. And I'm just going to be going in with this um, Milani bronze that I used earlier. And I'm just going to use this to create a little bit of shape. That's another trolley truck going past. Bang banging on my street. That's what that noise is. I'm just going to be creating a little bit of dimension and shape using that bronzer. It's a nice like cool tone one so it won't make my nose look too orange. And it's just going to give a little bit of shape to the area because the rest of my face is already bronzed so I don't want my nose to be like the pale left out part of my face. I feel pretty snatched now. Gee, that worked out really well. This is my new favourite, not this one, this one is my new favourite nose highlight. Nose contour. This is going to be too warm. If I put this on my nose, my nose would look kind of orange. But this made it look really cute. I love the way that turned out. What is that dark thing in the middle there? I kind of have like um, a dot in the middle of my forehead, so let's get rid of that. Good enough. Okay, so I'm going to go in with some eyeshadow now. Yay, exciting. I'm going to be using, as per usual, the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette, and I'm going to be making like a cranberry amaretto kind of eye. I'm going to use that same brush as I just used to contour my nose. I'm going to be going in with the shade Milk Chocolate, which is this one here. It's just like this matte, kind of like mid-toned um, matte crease kind of shade. I'm just going to be taking that on my eyes to give some like base definition um but yeah i'm going for like a cranberry ready kind of eye today that's why i'm wearing a red top i like thought i would match it to my eyeshadow plans 
Um, gee, I thought this eyeshadow, this light makeup look was gonna flop so many times. I almost quit like three times to like making this video because I was like, if this doesn't blend out nicely on camera and it just doesn't look good, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stop filming. But um, I've been pushing through, so hopefully this does work out. Um, a lot of the time, like, well, actually every time I film a makeup tutorial, I just go with it. Um, but I almost wanted to quit a couple of times today. I don't know, I'm usually like not a quitter, but today, <laughs> my bronzer really pushed me. Um, next I'm going in with the shade down here called Cherry Cordial. It's just like a red, um, burgundy kind of shade. It's really pretty, but it doesn't look too burgundy on the eyes, as you can see. It just, like, is a little bit burgundy. It's really pretty. Um, I love this for, like, formals as well. I feel like a burgundy eyes are so pretty for a formal. I'm just gonna be washing that again through the crease area and blending that in with the, um, milk chocolate shade that we put on first. It's really pretty. Um, I feel like I should use this Cherry Cordial shade more often because when I reach into this palette, I often go for like a similar kind of look every time. I often go for like a neutral, boring, basic look and I really do need to switch it up. I've been like wearing really basic makeup recently. Ah, <sighs> not a vibe. I need to be a little less basic. Um, basic is fun though. I love just doing a bronzer and a highlight, um, little eyeshadow moment and leaving it at that because that is like really flattering on my eye shape, I feel. So I do it all the time, but I just need to expand a little bit more and make sure I'm pushing myself to like grow my my personal limits, you know, grow past my comfort zone, that's the word. Um so yeah, now that I've brushed that all over the eye, actually I think I am gonna go in with um this same brush here that I was just using. And we're gonna get this shade amaretto. My watch will stop beeping in a second I swear. Um I'm gonna get this shade amaretto and I'm going to just brush it over my mobile lid and hope it works out. This shade amaretto kind of is a little bit like funny to me. Actually, I'm going to use my finger and just pat it on. It doesn't treat me as nicely as the other eyeshadows in this palette do, um, but it's a really pretty, like, olive -y. It has a bit of, like, a reflect to it, like a rose gold kind of reflect, um, and it's a bit like a shimmery version of the Cherry Cordial, so that's why I'm layering them together, because this will, like, deepen up the mobile lid and give a bit more, like, darkness to the look. This is more of, like, a halo eye than, like, a typical smoky eye that I go for. Um, so layering this will hopefully look good over that cherry cordial shade that I just used. I don't know how to stop that watch from beeping every day. It's um, a Baby G, like G-Shock, Baby G, G-Shock watch that my dad bought me ages ago. Um, I got it from like this thrift market and I wanted it so badly because it's really cute. It's like pink and um, white and black and I thought it was like iconic, but um, I don't really wear it as much anymore. And it just beeps every day. Like once a day it'll go beep 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 like it does in a lot of my videos and then I don't know how to stop it. Okay, that actually turned out better than I thought it would. I actually really like the way this looks. It's kind of got like a shimmer on the lid but without being too much. I really like that. I'm going to get a little random blending brush. This has no words on it but it's kind of like a fluffy blending brush. And I'm just going to buff the edges just to make sure that, that everything's blended nicely. Um, because I don't want to have um, too intense of like harsh unblended lines. I just grabbed a little bit of milk chocolate just to help that one blend a little better. Because um, sometimes I feel like I can blend something out away to nothing and then I have nothing in that area anymore. That looks pretty good. Should I deepen it up a little bit? I think I'm going to deepen up a teeny bit. I'm going to take this shade out here called Triple Fudge. Um, I'll hold it upside down. It's like a matte brown kind of darker brown. It's like the darkest brown shade in the palette. Um, and I'm just going to take that a little bit on the outer V just to deepen up the outer V a little bit more just because I think that's flattering on my eye shape. You don't have to do this if you don't feel like it, but I feel like it. I feel like it adds a little something. I really like um, more of a flared eye look on me. And even though I'm going for like a kind of darker um, eye, I still feel like I'm flaring it out a little bit because I think that just looks a little more flattering on my eye shape. I feel like curved eyeshadow looks can look a little bit weird on me sometimes. Um, and I'm just going to blend it out again and fluff out the edges with that clean brush that I've been using to blend with. There we go. Pretty happy with the, how that came out. I'm going to be doing some liquid liner and the liquid liner I'm using today. Where is it? I'm like digging through this like little Victoria's Secret makeup bag. I always throw my um, products into this bag um, when I want to film a tutorial. I like plan it and then I have to like shuffle through and find the products I'm looking for. Here it is. I'm using the Maybelline um, Hyper Easy Brush Tip Liner. Sometimes I forget to throw something into this bag and then halfway through I'm filming I like have to pause and get up which I don't like doing um, because I feel like I'm like in the flow once I start. Even though this eye look wouldn't necessarily call for a wing liner, 
I'm gonna go for wing liner. Can you see that? There's like a mark. I've like brushed my forehead and put eyeshadow on my forehead. Good job, Emily. Oh no. Okay, let's brush it out with some bronzer brush. Yeah, that flapped it away. Thank goodness. Okay, I'm going to draw my wing liner now. Wow, this this tutorial is really pushing me today. Okay, there's my wing. Oh my goodness, how annoying if my wing messed up. That would be that would make me mad. Nine times out of ten, though, I have a good wing day. I'm actually very lucky when it comes to wings. I feel like I have a pretty steady hand when it comes to drawing wing liner. I'm very used to it because I practice all the time because I literally draw a wing every day. And also, my eyes don't blink too much. Like, they don't, like, as I'm doing my wing liner. So I don't feel like it's difficult for me to draw on my eyes. I feel like some people, they really struggle because um, they blink a lot. I'm lucky that my eyes aren't very, like, blinky. I feel bad. One of my friends has really blinky eyes and she struggles to do her eyeliner because she just waters and blinks all the time. And I try and help her and I can't do it on her very well either because I can't get past the blinking. I guess it's also your eyes get a bit more used to it once you like are focused. I feel like I would blink more if it was someone else doing my eyeliner but because it's me doing my eyeliner I'm very used to it and I know what I'm gonna do. Anyway, this eyeliner is like really dry. I feel like I've only used it four times now and every time I've used it, it's become really, really dry. I'm gonna go and use a different eyeliner, which is kind of annoying, but I'll come right back. Okay, so luckily, despite my eyeliners trying to mess me up, I'm still having a good liner day. So I did start off with this Hyper Easy Maybelline one that has this like hexagonal kind of grip on it, um, but this is drying up really quickly, which is not preferable. It does have like this shaker thing, but when I shake it, it doesn't become more inky. So I filled in the rest of my liner with this Essence eyeliner pen. This is supposed to be extra long lasting. And I do feel like the pigment inside is extra long lasting because this is still a very inky eyeliner, even though I've had it for a while. But the problem I have with this eyeliner is, I don't know if you can tell, but it's very blunt in comparison to um, like a brush tip liner. Um, the Essence one is a felt tip liner. And so it just becomes very blunt very quickly. And, um, it kind of creates like a thick texture kind of line, so um, I have to be really careful when I'm using that, otherwise I can't create like precise details, um, but it is good as like an inky eyeliner to fill in like my lash line or something. So yeah, not my favorite eyeliners, but we got there in the end. Um, I was kind of surprised that this eye makeup worked out because I'm usually the kind of person that goes for like a dark crease and then a bright mobile lid. Like I always go for a lighter color on my mobile lid. Um, and I went up for a darker color today and it still looks good in my opinion, which is nice. Um, what did I do with my palette that I was using? I've put it somewhere random. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I'm going to be using this bronzer as my mirror now because this is a mess. I'm just going to be filling in my brows with the ColourPop Precision Brow Pencil. Um, I'm just going to draw on the brows like this. I fill in my tails first um, because I don't really have much of a tail. And then I blend the product to the front of my brow. Um, and then if there's any sparse areas, I just go in again and like... Fill them in with the like pencil side again. I really like how thin this brow pencil is. The tip is very fine and so I feel like I can get a really precise, you know, it's not the precision brow pencil for nothing. I can get a really precise um, detailed um, hair like strokes with this. Also, um, even though it's the darkest shade, I think, I think this is the darkest shade. I got the shade black brown. Um, I feel like it matches my um, brow hairs really well and also I don't have to like draw them in thickly. Like I can draw them in very thinly, put a very, very small amount of product on my brows and I don't get too intense of a brow. I've been kind of into like a lighter brow recently, like not as bold of a brow, just a more even and filled in brow. So I feel like this um, helps me get that look because that isn't like too intense. It's just like a little something. Um, I do feel like wearing fake lashes today because I just feel like it does so much for my eyes. So I'm going to be applying these random princess lashes that I got in Taiwan. I used them in my last tutorial too. Um, they're just, oh, let me get them out. They're just some flared lashes, but I really like the way flared lashes look on my eyes. Um, they're kind of smaller on one side and then become more flared at the other side, if you can see. Um, and they kind of have like a spaced out, um, kind of like smaller chunk, larger chunk, smaller chunk, larger chunk along the lash band. And I'll be applying those with, um, some random tweezers and my favorite duo lash glue, the clear one in the, um, blue container, just because it's reliable, just the blue duo lash glue. So I'm going to do that off camera and come back when they're stuck on. So I've popped my lashes on and they went on actually really easily. Um, they're still wet, so you can obviously still see the glue drying on my lash band. But, um, while we wait for it to dry, I'm just going to be doing some detailed highlights on my face using the same highlighter we used earlier, Whisper of Guilt. 
and this brush from Real Technique, which is a shading brush. I'm just going to be doing some little details um, around my eyes with this. So I'm going to be using that on my inner corners, just for an inner corner highlight. I feel like it'll brighten up the eyes a little bit, even though I've gone for a, quite a dark eyeshadow look. Um, I still like to use an inner corner highlight. I always use an inner corner highlight. It just adds so much, makes the eyes look wider, brighter, um, more awake looking. I just love the way it looks. Um, I read somewhere that they even heard this hack from their grandma, like people's grandmas even know of this hack. So I thought that was cool. Um, I'm also going to take this on my brow bone just to give a little bit of brightness and shimmer and lift there. I think that looks really pretty. And I'm just going to do that on the other side as well. Um, I might add a little bit on my cupid's bow because why not? There we go. And just so that I don't have any harsh lines, I'm going to be smoothing that around with my finger. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear, but there's so much going on over here. Like, there's a building that's getting built behind my house. Um, someone's, like, rebuilding their house, and there's all these trucks going past. It's just a crazy video. But I still, like, you know, I'm happy I pushed through because I was unsure about this. I was unsure about the makeup look. I was hating on my bronzer earlier. And in the end, I'm really happy with the way this makeup's coming out. So I'm glad I've pushed through. Push through things that you are doubting yourself in because even though this makeup is not that deep, but give it a go. Keep pushing. You might end up happy with the way your eyeshadow turns out. I'm going to be using some lip gloss to finish off this look, and this lip gloss I'm using today is from NYX. It's one of my favourites. It's the NYX Butter Gloss in the shade 14 Mademoiselle, and I love this gloss so much. I'm just going to apply that to my lips straight from the applicator. It's a very natural nude shade. It's not as light as um, like Fortune Cookie. Um, it's a little bit darker, but it looks very natural and nude on me. Um, it's kind of a brownie and nude. It's not like a pinky nude or anything. Um, but I feel like it looks very neutral with a lot of looks. So when I want the attention to be on my eyes, or even when I just want to look like a simple lip, this lipstick always um, does me well. It never fails me. And it's just a simple lipstick. I also really like the scent of the NYX Butter Glosses. It's got like a cupcake vanilla scent. It's really delicious. But yeah, this is the makeup look complete. I'll wait for my eyelash to dry completely and I'll come right back. I know I could have gone in underneath the eyes with some um, under eye eyeshadow, but I don't really like the way that looks on me. I don't know. I really like top heavy eyeshadow. It's just what I prefer. So yeah, that's probably all the makeup done. So yeah, this is the completed makeup look. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It took me a long way to get here. Um, comment anything you'd like to see from me in future down below. I'm not sure what exactly you guys want to see from me. So please let me know um, things that you would like me to film and I could do that for you guys. Um, subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me and hopefully I'll see you in a future video soon. Thank you so much for watching guys. Bye! Also, if you made it to this part of the video, thank you so much for watching. Congratulations on making it so far. Um, let me know what kind of length of videos you would like to see from me in future, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, love you!